I'll be talking about uh, some of the work we did uh, for Berkeley GW, which is one of the uh, NISAP applications. And um, I have been uh, pretty lucky to be part of this team and um, all the work we have done so far has um, uh, won us a uh, finalist place uh, in the Golden Bell nomination this year. So uh, hopefully this is uh, uh, gonna be interesting work to you. Um, we know that um, uh, material science codes and uh, chemistry codes uh, are some of the top consumers of um, uh, of the computing time at various HPC centers, and uh, it's true for NERSC as well. Um, some of these applications include uh, VASP, Quantum Express Org, NWCAM. Uh, CPTK and uh, Berkeley GW. Uh, these applications are very important. Uh, they're important for uh, the study of um, the um, underlying physics of the materials. Also, it's very important to uh, for the design of um, uh, novel devices like uh, solar panels, um, batteries, and quantum computers. So um, the use case I'm going to speak about today uh, is uh, kind of a prototype of uh, quantum computers. And um, more specifically, it's the study of uh, devacancy effects. Um, so um, what is uh, GW? Um, uh, G stands for Green's function, uh, W for screened uh, column in interaction. And uh, GW calculations usually sit on top of uh, some of the other uh, chemistry or um, material science codes like uh, Quantum Express or um, ABINIT. So these um, applications calculate uh, you know, some of the ground state properties and then uh, the results get uh, fed into some of the GW codes like um, Berkeley GW. And um, Berkeley GW would, you know, kind of refine uh, on top of um, those results and get a more accurate uh, estimation uh, in terms of, say, the self energy or some other uh, properties. And um, these uh, GW calculations um, help uh, understand, you know, some of uh, these questions uh, listed here, like uh, what happens when you uh, when you add or remove an electron from a system? Um, how do electrons behave when you apply a voltage, or how how does a system respond to light or X rays? So, so these are very uh, important uh, questions in material science and are very important um, for uh, energy related uh, device designs. Uh, a bit about uh, Berkeley GW. Um, so there are four different um, modules in Berkeley GW, epsilon, sigma, kernel and absorption. Um, if you compile Berkeley GW, you'll get four different executables. And uh, these executables can be run in lockstep. So, uh, you know, the output of epsilon can be fed into sigma to calculate the self energy. And then the output of sigma can be fed into kernel to calculate something else. So uh, it just goes on like this. Uh, but uh, today, um, I'm going to just focus on the you know, the GW based calculations, which is epsilon and sigma. Uh, the other two are more on the uh, base Salpeter equation based um, calculations. Um, so some of the uh, computational motifs uh, for Berkeley GW um, are uh, matrix multiplications, uh, Fourier transforms, uh, large reductions, um, eigenvalue problems, matrix inversions, um, but in epsilon and sigma, we're mostly uh, dealing with the, the first three. Um, and when I say large scale, um, 
uh, some of the matrices have uh, hundreds of uh, thousands of rows and millions of columns. Uh, so we're really dealing with you know large matrices and large um, calculations. Um, the table uh, down below um, shows some of the kernels inside uh, epsilon and sigma and um, their computational and memory uh, requirements. Um, so if you look at the scaling, um, epsilon and sigma are a bit different. So epsilon has a uh, quadric uh, scaling in terms of uh, computation and cubic for uh, memory. Um, it's uh, a bit lower for sigma. Um, I talk about this because um, this helps us understand you know, what um, the bottlenecks could be for uh, these kernels or for this, these um, modules. Um, so if I, if I speak from a refine uh, perf performance model point of view, um, these uh, scaling um, properties would help me understand uh, whether the, the kernel is uh, compute bound or uh, memory bandwidth bound um, or communication bound or, you know, um, even uh, how much physical memory we need, because we, we could be uh, limited by how much physical memory we have on the GPU uh, or even on the host. So understanding, understanding this is very um, important, at least it has been felt helpful for uh, this work here. Uh, so um, the goal of uh, this NISAB uh, project is to have a GPU port, uh, an efficient one um, for, for the code. Um, we started with a pretty efficient CPU implementation, which uh, is parallelized with MPI and OpenP and uh, is scaled pretty well up to, I think, 12 uh, petaflop, petaflops on Cori. So um, given our understanding of um, this code, uh, given you know, all the uh, gem-like calculations, the dense linear algebra we have, um, we believe that you know, GPUs could really help us uh, speed up even more. So um, the approaches we took um, were really two programming models. Uh, one is uh, CUDA C++ and the other is OpenACC. So the, um, uh, the reason behind, uh, you know, um, this choice is uh, that, um, you know, we would like to um, prototype some ideas pretty quickly using OpenACC because uh, it's a, a directive-based um, language. So uh, it's very easy to, you know, code something up if you, ha if you have uh, some idea. And uh, because the, uh, the code uh, is written in Fortran, uh, if we write everything in CUDA, you know, there could be a lot of interfacing, uh, even though um, in our CUDA branch, we did end up, you know, doing all of this. Um, but uh, for the, uh, the choice of CUDA, um, the C++, um, a version for some kernels uh, is that uh, we were hoping to kind of fine tune some of the kernels um, uh, in places where you know OpenACC uh, is not able to. So that was the kind of the rationale behind that, and um, because we have so many you know jam um, LAPAC uh, FFT um, operations. Naturally, we uh, have relied on uh, Kubla's QFT uh, kind of libraries. And then for the rest of the code, we, have to, uh, we had to write custom codes. Um, some of the techniques uh, we used um, to uh, optimize uh, this, this code to make it uh, efficient uh, include uh, the non-blocking cyclic, cyclic communication scheme, uh, also the, uh, the use of CUDA strings and a batched um, 
operation or a, a batching mechanism. Um, I, I will not go into the details, but I will uh, touch on uh, you know, the communication scheme a bit uh, and also uh, some optimizations we did uh, for Sigma GPP. Um, but before uh, going into that, um, this, uh, this table here, uh, with this table, I would like to show you just, you know, uh, what, what kind of large scale we're talking about. Um, so um, the benchmarks we use are uh, some of the silicon, silicon carbide uh, supercells. Uh, the largest one has uh, 2742 atoms. Um, and that's probably 10,000 um, electrons. And uh, some of the parameters you can see uh, circled in, in red are really mind-bogglingly large. Um, so um, to, uh, you know, if we were not able to scale this up very efficiently, then, you know, the runtime would be kind of unimaginable. Um, and um, uh, so uh, with this um, um, optimization, with this implementation, I'll show you later that we have actually uh, managed to, um, you know, done this type of uh, calculation at this scale uh, within, say, 10 minutes. Um, I can't remember the exact time, but it's within a few minutes. So um, the communication scheme, um, here we're talking about, you know, really large uh, scale uh, matrix mod modifications. Uh, if we have a matrix M like this, kind of uh, fat and short, and multiply it by its transpose or conjugate, um, we, uh, we're trying to get this small uh, matrix and uh, to, to um, for example, if we have four ranks, uh, we would have four different uh, copies of this uh, small uh, quarter of this chi matrix. And um, each rank would be calculating a copy. And then we kind of accumulate all the copies together to, to get this final copy. Uh, so the conventional way of doing this is, you know, really, um, based on MPI collectives. Um, so each rank is calculating its own um, copy, and then we reduce to one copy um, after you know, the calculation is done. And it goes on until we get to um, you know, the last um, part, last portion of um, the chi matrix. Um, so you can see uh, you know, the, the communication here is uh, happening in a blocking fashion. And um, we would really like to uh, hide that um, behind uh, the, the computation on the GPUs. So um, that's um, the, the main design, the main motive uh, behind uh, this communication scheme. Um, so, um, if you look at this scheme, um, the the blocks, the you know the grayish um, blocks are communication, and now they are hiding behind the the computation. Um, there's still uh, roughly the same amount of um, blocks like this in the um, in this new scheme, uh, but if we look at um, you know a larger scale, um, this is a really point-to-point -point, uh, based communication, uh, whereas this is, um, you know, uh, reduction and collective based, uh, and how this reduction um, is implemented, uh, it, whether it's efficient, uh, it could be another question. Um, but with, um, uh, with this uh, non-blocking point-to-point -point, uh, communication scheme, we were able to, um, uh, you know, um, reduce the amount of communication we do um, um, 
and uh, hide uh, this communication behind uh, the computation. The pattern um, uh, of how these uh, different copies move around uh, the, the network is a bit different uh, than in the other scheme. Um, but, um, well, this is why we call it a cyclic um, communication scheme. So, uh, for example, for this particular uh, quarter of CHI, um, rank one would be calculating A copy, the blue copy, and this would be merged uh, with, you know, this green copy uh, as it moves along the network and then it goes on. Uh, and then back to uh, rank zero. Uh, so here, rank zero would have the final results for this quarter. Uh, so um, this has proven very helpful um, for the performance, especially um, at uh, a lower, at, at a smaller and medium, uh, small and medium uh, scale. Um, at an extreme, extremely large scale, uh, we did notice that uh, the overlapping between the, you know, the communication and computation may not be as effective as we thought it would be, or um, at least um, as it was uh, for, the, for the lower uh, scale. Um, but uh, for the most part, it has been pretty effective and has been um, providing a lot of performance improvements. Um, for the higher, for the larger scale, we are still investigating, you know, what other things we could do in order to, um, you know, make sure the, the hiding is uh, still effective. Um, anyway, I'll, I will show you some results later, which um, has the scaling curve and you can see, uh, you know, the difference um, um, as the scale changes. So the other uh, point I'd like to uh, touch on is um, the reductions in uh, Sigma GPP. So uh, what uh, this kernel is doing is basically this calculation here. Uh, the different circles represent uh, different dimensions that we have to uh, collapse over. Uh, so all these uh, matrices are, you know, very at a very large scale and um, in the end of this kernel, we're, right, we're really trying to get a uh, very small array, sometimes a, a three by one um, array. Uh, uh, Charlene, I think we're uh, coming up close to the end of time. We have about one minute if we want to have uh, okay. uh, a yeah. All right, so um, some of the optimizations um, we did uh, include, you know, just moving the um, uh, the, the kernels from a bandwidth bound region to a compute bound region and replacing some of the instructions. Um, also removing some of the excessive branching. Um, so we will talk about uh, this uh, in the upcoming hackathon in more detail. Uh, if you're interested, you can uh, take a look. Uh, but in terms of, uh, you know, results, uh, we have, um, you know, a very good uh, speed up um, compared to the CPU implementation for both uh, Epsilon and Sigma. Uh, the weak scaling also looks uh, very good. Um, and the strong scaling, um, so this is, uh, you know, where we got the, the full uh, scale summit run. Uh, and uh, we ended up at uh, 78 petaflops uh, for the throughput. Um, and uh, up to, you know, 20,000 uh, GPUs, um, both Epsilon and Sigma scale uh, very well. Um, it's just the last few points, uh, which uh, we're still investigating. Um, but overall, it's, it's been a pretty, you know, um, pretty impressive work. And um, uh, I would say, you know, kudos to the whole team for getting all of this uh, done. And um, with that, I'd like to stop and thanks to, to acknowledge all the resources we have, uh, we have used. Thanks.